Hello. Today in my video, I'm going to show you more information of the Axial Reef. Want to find out more? Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to show you in my video um, more information of the Axial Reef. Uh, my last video was mainly a unboxing video. Um, so hopefully in this video, um, you will find out more information about the rig. Um, so that will help you to decide whether you're going to place an order of the Axial Reef. Hopefully you will find this useful. Okay, so um, I guess first of all, I should give you guys a 360 view of the Axial Reef. This is the RBX 10, um, a brand new platform. So I'll show you from the front. The rear. There you go. It is quite large. So if I can just give you the, the rough dimension. From front tire to the rear tire, it is about 22 inches long. From left to right, it is just over 12 inches wide. And the wheel or the actual tire dimension can see is about six inches so it is quite a large rig um, so you'll probably need to find a little bit more space um, comparing to you know storing your um, rock crawlers or um, trail crawlers um, in my last video I did say um, currently in the UK you will be able to order the, the black ones. Um, I know there will be a lot of fans out there who would like the orange version, but on the website, um, they said in UK, the orange version is not going to be available until March sometimes. So it's still quite a long wait. Today is only the 8th of February, it's a Monday. Um, so you'll be looking at at least enough a month before um, the orange version will become um, available to purchase or order. But um, in the US, I think the orange version probably has been pushed back to end of March to April. I'm not 100% sure, but according to what I read online, um, it seems like this is the case. So even longer wait than the rest of us living in United Kingdom. Anyway, um, just wanted to let you guys know if you're living in UK and you are not a big fan of the black version and you really want to get the orange ones, there is a way to get around it, but it will cost you a little bit more money. Um, I've done some research yesterday and I found out currently you can buy the, the black um, version, the ready to, to run version from your local hobby store. And there is a way to, to you know, to get the orange um, cage if you want, but you will need to buy the entire um, Axial Reef in black. And 
you will be able to go onto the website or um well i guess you won't be able to visit um, the hobby store because they are not allowed um walk-in browsing at the moment um, but if you go onto the website you will be able to find um, the option parts for a orange body or orange cage and it also come with um, so you'll you'll be able to find the left cage the right cage it also come with which is on a separate part so part one is the left and right cage second part will be the um, the top and the, the rear cage and the bonnet and then the third part will be the battery tray and the receiver box or oh, i might be wrong but um, i will give you the link um, at the description below um, i think the third part is just the um, the battery tray and the bottom chassis actually that is correct and then the fourth option is to buy the fuel cell box in orange and then the last one will be the receiver box so if you want to change the whole top carrier to orange color then you will have to buy the five parts um, if you're just planning of changing the cage itself then you just need to buy the left and right panel as one part and then the second part is the top on it and the, the roof rack and i think it's two parts then that should be more than enough um unless you want to change a fuel box wherever you want it orange really but i think my personal preference will be changing the cage to orange including the bonnet and the top and i'll leave the fuel cells in black i'll leave my receiver box in black and the um, lower chassis mount in black as well and this cage is also available in a gray color so i believe the gray version is going to come out as a kit version that you have to build um, but you will be able to buy the cage in gray on its own um, again it's split into the five parts the cage then the bonnet and top rack um, the receiver box the, the battery box with the under chassis plate and the fuel cells box um, as you can see on the photo there um, you see all the options parts um, available to purchase um, they're not too expensive um, if you are living in UK I think if you just want to do a basic cage conversion that's going to cost you 40 to 50 pound so it's not too expensive if you really fancy the orange look um, I think I will probably purchase the, the orange one just keep it as a spare cage or whenever I feel like to have a different color of the body and then on top of that um, if you don't if you want to change out the um, I think this is Laxen body um, you will be able to buy this part as well the bonnet cover and the two left and right side panel you'll be able to buy that um, it comes with a clear panel and you'll be able to spray the panel to whatever color you want and it, the kit also come with a um, decal sheets that you'll be able to decorate the side panel and the top bonnet um, to whichever way you want and then if you want to change out the um, driver and the co-pilot and the the dashboard or cockpit you can as well that also come with a separate kit um, i'll show you a picture here um, you can see the actual two drivers it comes with a clear um, laxen body and then the helmet two helmets it comes in black and they also come with a decal sheets um, for you to put on the um, seat belt or harnesses and then there's the steering wheel um, center axial logo and then the, the dashboard um, and as well as these panels um, that it has been pre-factory decaled so you'll be able to, to change all that um, 
yourself if you want to pick you know your own color so it's got a lot of options out there that you can customize your your own rig so it's really good that axio is giving us all these um option parts to to purchase so yeah i'm looking forward to that at the moment i think they are available from the supplier so if you want to order it it probably will take a few days before it will arrive to your door but um, it's worth the wait you know if you want to customize your rake to your own preference um, and then i just want to show you the, the front axle so this is the all new ar14b axle this whole axle from here to there is all one piece. So this is something new from Axio that they have done a lot of research and development to create with the uh, kind of strong reinforced parts. It is quite strong because as you can see underneath the main axle they have put in uh, extra plastic bracket so that will stiffen up the whole axle but um, if you're planning to run your rig in the snow or when it's freezing cold outside or sub-zero degree then you do have to be careful because um, I've seen on another YouTube video um, in RC driver the guy managed to cracked open the axle you know after landing from a from a flipped so if you're leaving in a warm country then i think you know with the warmer weather the the plastic will be a, a little bit more flexible so you might not be able to um, crack the, the axle as easily but then again you probably need to drop from a height or at high speed crash to, in order to break it um, I also believe there will be a um, aftermarket upgrade option to change the the axle to aluminum um, at the moment they are not available as yet I've done some research online I cannot find anything um, there is a rumor that the aluminum um, axle front axle um, is currently in production but I don't know when and how much it's going to be so we'll have to wait and see it is something that I'm looking forward to because I do want to change out the front and rear axle uh, to aluminum parts and um, yeah as I said earlier this is called um, AR14B the 14 number come from the differential covers it has 14 bolts at the front you will be able to see there's a uh, double bent uh, steering rod this is something new um, if you own any other axle um, rig um, or rock crawler tra trail crawler um, then you will know normally the steering rod is one piece of straight metal whereas this one is double bent so that will give you a bit of clearance of steering before it will um, contact the differential cover so it is something Axel has taken notice of they know people is going to change it if they don't get you know enough steering angle and you know they have already done it for us which is really good um, there's one thing that I'm not 100% keen on is you can see in the middle of the um, the rod there's there's a hole and you can also see from there there's a hole in the middle at the bottom mount or uh, bottom link um, I'm not sure why they have done it um, my only explanation is you know if you did decide to build this out of a kit then you can always put your um, allen key or a, a skinny screwdriver through there and then it will help you to kind of turn into the the, the plastic knuckles 
um, because otherwise it's quite hard to find grips unless you put the two bit the two end together and then they counter wind each other into position but um, yeah I personally would prefer you know a solid um, rod rather than having a hole in the middle but it's not a big deal it's still strong enough and um, I still really like the rake then again I mentioned uh, in my last video um, the axial reef come with a steering circle because the, the rake is capable of taking a 3s to 4s lipo battery with that much power um, imagine if you accidentally crash into a ward or a tree then there is a chance that you might break the the servo horn whereas having that it gives you a lot of flexibility if you do bump into something um, which is really cool um, I know at the moment it comes with a Spectrum S614S um, steering servo and I believe this is a 14 kilograms servo and possibly a lot of us is going to change that out fairly shortly um, there is a, a spectrum um, steering servo that you will be able to upgrade to and i believe that one is 25 kilogram so it's a lot stronger but then again you will be paying a lot of money for the 25 kilo um, steering servo by spectrum in UK, just on the the upgrade servo itself is about ninety to ninety five pound, so it's quite expensive. Unless you go for a different brand, it might be slightly cheaper. Or if you go for a um, Chinese brand, then you know it will be a lot cheaper. But then again, I'm not sure how reliable um, the servo is, is going to be. Um, and then the cheaper one, I'm not sure, you know, whether all the parts inside will be, um, you know, containing the metal gears. So you need to look into that and pick the right steering servo um, for, for the upgrade. So as you can see, the Axial Reef, it does come with a brake rotor and a red calipers is very nice and the calipers it does have the axial logo printed on it as well um, i know some people probably worry that you know if you are doing um rock crawling or you know trying to launch the the reef up the mountain then a lot of sand and pebbles is going to get trapped inside the wheels between the, the actual wheels and the, the rotor and then you know it, it might cause some damage yes it is true there is a possibility that will happen but um, you know these parts are fairly easy to replace um, you can actually buy the break disc rotor and the calipers uh, separate as a kit I'll show you a picture here and then the wheel itself they are pretty gorgeous to be honest but like a lot of other um, owner of the axial reef they probably will change out the wheel because first of all that is plastic and it comes in glued tires um, I know why they have done it is because you know if you're running this rig in 3s 4s then you know the spins spin so fast that you know it might pull the the tire out from from the beat lock um, but if you're planning to just run your rig um, on 2s to 3s then I guess you know changing out to beat lock wheel so you get the aluminium um, or plastic body with the beat logs it will look quite a lot nicer but it just means you know if you're planning to do high speed then 
you know, you have to think twice before doing the upgrade. I can imagine, you know, once you have the aluminum beadlock wheels on these tires, it's going to be really good looking. I'm trying to find um, a beadlock wheels, um, aluminum one um, in orange or bronze color with deep dish. Um, that will be the, the ultimate look that I'm going to um, achieve. So hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to find that part fairly soon. But, um, you know, because the rake is still fairly new and, you know, a lot of um, countries, they still can't get their hand on it. So I'm not sure how quickly the manufacturer can manufacture the aftermarket parts or upgrade parts. So we have to wait and see. Um, while we are at the front end of the car, just want to show you the front is a five inch suspension. It does come with a aluminum um, tower with black coils and it comes with a ring which you can set to preload um, if you want to lower or raise your rake um, well I guess you can't lower it too much you only have another 7 mil to 8 mil at the front and maybe another 10 mil at the back that you could potentially lower your rake but um, if you want the suspension to be firmer you can always dial this ring down it will raise the rise height and it also gives you firmer suspension. But uh, I'm quite happy with the current setting, so um, I probably won't change it until, you know, when I get a chance to take the rig out and then I might be able to decide whether I need to change the adjustment or not. Um, I might even change out the, the suspension after I spend some time with the rig I don't know, we will see. Um, so, just to show you inside the bonnet again, bear with me one second. I'll remove the clips. So, the bonnet is really nicely designed, it looks realistic and it gives you a lot of space inside as well. There's a Velcro there to secure your. 2S, 3S or 4S batteries. Um, it does come with a IC5 or EC5 um, battery adapter and it comes with heavy duty cables as well. So there's three cables there, the orange one, the black one and the grey one. And the grey one I believe is the one that will connect to the receiver in order to give you the uh, telemetry of the battery um level but you will need to get the spectrum ic5 battery so it's a smart battery um, otherwise you won't be able to um, use the um, telemetry um, options so you need to spend a little bit more money to get to get the ic5 version rather than the ec5 but yeah you will make that decision um you know when it comes to buying the batteries um, then let me show you the battery case so there are holes inside um, inside the box you will find there are two sets of um, battery position plates uh, so you just need to bolt them in um, if you decide to use a shorter battery and you know you'll be able to position either towards the back, towards the front or in the middle, depends on, you know, where you want to distribute the weight on the rake. So, um, yeah, it gives you all the options there, which is really cool. Close the bonnet. And another thing is quite clever of what the research and development team has done is, although this cage is very robust and very sturdy you know if you are driving the rig at high speed or you're trying to jump off 
from a high platform to land then let me see if I can demonstrate when the springs are at its full compression there will still be a little bit of flex of the shock tower as you can see here but what what they have designed on the actual bonnet is that act as a stabilizer so there will be no flex once you put the, the bonnet on of course you need to keep the pins in and it gives you no flex whatsoever which is very clever and very cool in my opinion something to uh, make you guys aware what else um, I've already mentioned um, in my previous video the servo steering servo is mounted as an angle so if you're driving at high speed then all the rocks and you know whatever you come across on the on the surface is not gonna get direct impact to the servo which is good because you don't want to damage your steering servo um, too soon because um, you know that would take you some time to strip out everything and you know go into a shop or online order for a new replacement servo so that's very clever design there and um, I did think of you know why have they not designed um, as part of the the axle is put in a full cover to protect the servo but then again you know if you're using a high speed steering servo um, it depends how heavy your rake is going to be then you know you do need to let the heat to to escape whereas you know having it exposed it would definitely do that otherwise you know if, if you keep them in a box then it's going it might get overheat fairly quickly and definitely definitely you want to avoid that the under chassis is very smooth so you're not going to get hung up by anything and not very often and i believe there will be a aftermarket option is to put in a stainless steel plate to protect the um, the bottom of the belly of your reef so uh, i look forward to that as well and if you look at the back you see the trailing arm um, axial claim this is reinforced already but uh, I'm sure if you're running on a 4S and you're constantly bashing the rake then that is going to, to bend or something is going to give so um, like most of us I think very quickly we're going to change that out to a aluminum parts to make it more sturdy and I believe there's also another option is instead of changing out the entire trailing arms you can bolt on a aluminum or metal plate like a u-shaped plate that protect the, the two side and the bottom and it, it covers the whole run of the trailing arms so that's another option and potentially it's cheaper than buying the whole piece um, aluminum parts um, but uh, it might cost you a bit more money then the back it has a five and a half inch um, suspension yeah you can hear the noise you know the, the spring is rubbing on the suspension body you can't avoid it unless you change out the the actual suspension to something else but um, it's not too bad I don't mind it then you have the the fuel box which is empty you can open it and put in extra weight if you want to you know put some downforce to the end it's entirely up to you you'll be able to purchase the, the weight in different um, size it's a five gram 
10 gram, 15, 20, 25, or whatever you preferred, and you will be able to lay them in, stick them together inside the box to give you the extra rear end um, downforce. Or alternatively, if you're planning to put in a light kit, which I've seen, um, it's like brake lights at the back and then a, a front light at the front, and you'll be able to install the lighting modules inside, so which is quite handy to have. And there's another thing that I've noticed when I was looking around the rig. Let me just spin it around. So behind the ESC, you see there's, there's a hole. It's almost like a, a scope or a tunnel to guide the, the wind to, to go out. So as you're driving, the air will take the heat out from the ESC, there's a fan there, so the fan will pull the heat up from the ESC above and then as you're driving the wind will take the heat past the ESC and then the heat will go out towards the end or you know you come out from the back of the of the cage. But if I can find the right angle to show you, it might be a bit tricky. Um, so the the duck above behind the ESC, you can see it. So the air will come out from there and then, you know, it will help to cool the uh, fuel cells if you decide to put some electrical parts inside. I don't know if they have done that on purpose or what, but that's something that I've noticed, which is quite cool. It um, divert the, the air to the back and then it just helped the, the cooling of anything behind it. There you will see the um, the main switch. There there is another location to to put this switch if you don't feel like you know reaching out from the bottom or from the from the side. You can position it to the back of the cockpit, which I will do when I have time. I think it's so much easier to just reach down, hit the button, on off, job done, rather than trying to find the, the button behind the um, spur gear plate. It's, I don't know why they fit it there. I don't really like it. It's, it's not easy access, but anyway. Then at the back is fairly similar to the front axle. This is also one piece. It's quite sturdy as well. It does come with a metal differential cover, um, two upper links, and then two pivot balls for connecting the trailing arms. So it's, there's nothing special there. Uh, there is another um, connection there. I don't know what it is for. Um, I don't see why anyone want to connect the um, training arm to the higher position because you know something might get caught underneath but um, yeah I don't know why they have it but anyway they have put in a pivot ball to make everything very sturdy which is really cool I'm sure you can you know fit in um, spaces to make up that space so it doesn't just show a black pivot ball you can have it in pink orange to match the, the rake um, yeah do whatever you want to um, to pimp up your axial reef it is your rake after all why not customize it and then the back Similar to the front, it does come with the, the brake rotor and the brake calipers, which is really nice. Um, inside the rear axle, um, you will be able to see there are two um, direct drive um, metal rod, which I will show you in the picture. So there's a longer one on the right hand side and a shorter one. For the left, it connects inside the um, rear differential and the differential box inside. It has four spider gears. I'll show you another picture here. 
so you know what's inside the differential gearbox. Okay, you'll probably notice there is these additional parts not doing much at the moment but I know Axial they will be releasing a um, upgrade part and this as well the one on the on the right hand side there you go there um, this is for uh, mounting the sway bar so it will help to stabilize the, the rear suspension um, the whole rig will be a lot more stable um, at the moment. If you are running a 3S or 4S, if you pull the um, trigger on the controller to throw the then you will see a lot of torque twist. And if you want to avoid that, then you can either put in more weight at the back to weigh it down. You can change out the suspension. You can install the sway bar, um, but I think, you know, by firming up the rear suspension, that will prevent this uh, torque steer a lot. Um, you know, it doesn't look very nice when you try to throw it and then, you know, one of the wheels lift up off the ground. It just doesn't look that good, in my opinion. And then... The underside, this is the um, receiver box. So you will be able to change out the receiver. It is fairly easy to do. You just need to unbolt the one, two, three, and four bolts on both sides. So the whole under chassis will collapse. And then you just need to take down another four screws securing the uh, front and rear suspension and then the whole lot will come down and you can separate the um, the cage and if you want to change out the receiver you don't need to take out another two to four screws and then you'll be able to pull out the receiver box uh, lift up the cover plate and there you will see a, a seal ring uh, i'll show you a picture here and then you'll be able to get access to the uh, Spectrum 6 channel receiver. And if you want to change it, then just pick it out and put in the new receiver that you want to use. And then just put the cover plate back on, put the screw back in for the underside. And then, you know, just follow the same process in reverse order that you have remove the the cage and that that is it fairly straightforward there's no difficulties in that um what else is there to show you yes inside the rig which i'll try and find a photo to show you um the gearbox at the moment it is single speed um you will be able to find um, I don't know if it if you need a aftermarket parts or not, or just simply add a um, micro servo inside, and then it will be able to give you the two speed. At the moment, it is single speed, so I guess the aftermarket parts you will need to buy the micro servo and as, as well as the the second gear in order to give you the um, low and high speed. Thing I didn't mention the under chassis you will see the wild ball drive shaft it is very robust the cover is plastic but I'm sure you'll be able to find them um, aftermarket um, stainless steel um, or aluminum or any other material parts um, when it becomes available this inside that um, adapter you will find a six mil output pinion output which is a little bit more 
beefy compared to the standard rock roller which is really good because you know it is quite a high power rig and you do need to oversize certain parts in order to um to take the power and not to you know break down so easily so it's something that they have done which is really good i'm glad to see um yeah it looks like it will last for quite a while before you will have to change it out to the um metal parts if you desired inside the the gearbox or where the motor is mounting you will see a 53 tooth spur gear it's all metal which is really good and you will also find a, a transmission motor plate which is also metal so it will be very sturdy and very robust inside the transmission box you will also find transmission shaft i'll show you a picture here okay and then the transmission gear you'll see the three gears inside the transmission box and again they're all um, metal gears so you don't have to worry about stripping the, the plastic gears or anything so uh, it will last you for quite a long time what else is there to show you i think i've covered pretty much everything about the rig um, there is one last thing if you can see it there where the bottom links is connected uh, you will be able to reposition the bottom links left and right as well as the two rears um, into different positions so it depends you know how efficient you want to run your rig then you can change it into different positions um, on the uh, bottom plate so um, play around with that and set up the rig until you are 100% happy I think that is it guys um, I don't think I have missed out anything else um, when I was looking around the rig I still haven't managed to um, slap on the battery and go for a test run because um, the weather hasn't been very nice uh, it has been raining a lot and overnight there's snow as well so uh, i just don't feel like going outside at the moment and um yeah i think i will just you know keep my rig in the box for a little while longer and um hopefully one day when the weather is a bit nicer then i will be able to take it out for a spin and then i shall show you guys another video of the actual running footage and if there's anything else that i find um you know during the run of the of the rake then i will let you guys know straight away um for now i think that is it guys um i just kind of look forward to um when i receive the new um orange cage um, I think it will look quite nice with the with the orange though I, I still like the, the black cage a lot but um, I just like to have a different look depends on my mood um, yeah so you know unlike the factory ready to run orange version um, I think it will look nicer if I just change out the cage to orange so the top the two left and right side the bonnet um, to orange color i think i'll keep the fuel cell box in black i will keep the battery tray black and the receiver box in black as well because i don't want it to stand out you know underneath the chassis it doesn't look too nice in my opinion um yeah so it is something that i'm looking forward to and i can't wait to um to be able to change it to um aluminum beadlock wheels i don't think i'll be running 4s um i prefer to run the rig a little bit slower it looks more realistic and um if you look on the the real um footage of the rock bouncer on youtube then you know you would 
you'll be able to tell the speed that those rakes are going. They are not super fast. It doesn't launch up the, the hill like a rocket. So um, I think a 2S to 3S battery will be more than enough for myself. Um, I will put on a 4S battery just to test out exactly how much power the uh, ESC and the 2200 kV motor is capable of but it's just to let myself know how fast it can go um, but yeah I'm more than happy to settle with a 3S or even 2S um, just remembered so each of these suspension both front and both rear suspension it does come with a bump stop at the bottom which is really nice so you won't get the um, the clicking noise at full compression when the 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 bit of metal at the bottom of the um, suspension body hitting the bottom cup. Really nice. Ah, I just remembered. Um, if you guys want to upgrade, not just the the outside. If you want to change out anything from inside. Um, the rig it does come with a 130 amps um, spectrum firma smart esc there is a upgrade version to 150 amps so if you want to get more power out um, you can do that upgrade um, the only difference is the 150 amps version it does come up a little bit higher but it is of the same footprint so uh, it will definitely fit in there and it would just come up a little bit higher on the cockpit and then you can also change out the um, spectrum 2200 kv motor to whichever one that you decide to to go for to give you more speed or more torque so it is available for you to change out and in terms of the control it does come with a spectrum dx3 radio system and it's paired with a Spectrum SR6100 six channel receiver underneath there. Um, this is the, the receiver that will give you the stability control. Um, you will be able to turn it on or off or change it to different settings, but you will need a separate program card. Uh, you, you will need to buy that separate. It doesn't come with the rake. Um, so if you want to change the uh, receiver or even the controller, you can also do that. Um, the option is there. And then I think the last, last thing that I want to point out before I go is if you look at the, the front, um, we spoke about the, the main axle, then you can see it's connect to a C hub and then the steering knuckle. So all the parts are independent so if you do break something if you hit a tree or a rock then you can replace them individually so you don't have to replace the whole um, axle which is a lot more cost effective um, the build itself is very sturdy let me try and lift this up to show you at the steering knuckle you'll find the normal um, hack screw which is really cool and traditionally if especially on a rock crawler you will see the uh, steering knuckle is connected to the c-hub with a direct drive hack screw whereas in the axial reef there is a dowel pin both top and bottom and then it's being fastened or secured by another um, hack screw to compress the dial pin top and bottom so you won't have the risk of tightening too tight at the knuckle and you know clamping the the steering knuckle to the c hub as you can see the gap there so it gives you the free movement all the time which is a very clever design and you have that on obviously both left and right steering knuckle And um, yeah, I just want to uh, mention again, full flex, Q 
keep that on the table. There's a lot of flax. Let me show you exactly how much. It's about seven inches of flax. So um, it will look really good if you decided to go out and take some photos of the axial reef on a rock or uh, up the hill. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of fun taking photos as well as driving the rake around, um, you know, to show up in front of your friends. It is very impressive. I, I am really, really happy with it. Um, yeah, that is it guys. Um, I hope you don't find this video um, being too long. I do want to uh, give you as much information as I can. Um, I have to do a lot of um, online reading and research and watch videos to try and get as much information as I can. Um, because as I said um, previously, um, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm just doing it as a part-time hobby thing. Um, and I personally really like um, remote control vehicles. Um, you know, you probably have seen my other video of the... Um, when I was doing the upgrade on my um, Trasis TRX4 Defender, when I was changing out the steering knuckles, not doing the uh, metal upgrade. And then I also done the video on my Punya um, Excavator, which you will be able to find towards the end of my video. I will leave a, a link to it. Um, so yeah, I, I always like cars and um, I just want to share my knowledge and my toys with you guys so yeah hopefully you guys will like my video um, if you do like it and you find it informative don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channels i promise i will bring you a lot more um, video uh, in the nearest future and i will be able to show you more of my other collections of toys uh, which might inspire you in looking into that um, you know, it is a fun hobby, so uh, why not share what we have and uh, we might inspire each other with different things. So um, that is it for now. Hope you guys, you know, have fun with your RC and I shall see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Take care. Bye.